Hey everyone, Jeff here from Films at Home, and unfortunately today we're going to be doing the most disappointing 4K movies of 2022. Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to the channel for this video. Now, I wasn't sure I was going to do a worst of list for 2022 because I pointed out that last year my worst of list actually got more views than my best of list. And I don't want to really amplify the negative, but I did hear from you guys and you gave your feedback. You wanted to have a list to reference and know which titles may have some issues, which ones you may want to avoid, which ones are worth waiting for a sale on, and just get my you know full end of year review the same way I do a top 10 best of the year. So totally understand that, but I will say I don't think any of the movies on this list except for one are not worth buying. This is not a worst of list. This is a most disappointing list for various different reasons, and we'll talk about some of the releases that came out this year, which were very disappointing for collectors and physical media enthusiasts and some of the things that you need to watch out for in the future if you're going to buy some of these discs. Now I will say right off the bat this was a very very good year for 4k and physical media. 2022 is one of the best years I've had collecting since I started doing this. I started collecting in 2013, 2014. I started YouTube in 2017. 2022 was one of the most exciting years for physical media. There were so many great releases. So there's the positive, but here's some of the negative. Now, to be honest, this year started off with a bang with what is probably one of the worst 4K discs of all time. And this one was certainly disappointing because I was hoping it could be redemption for Disney dipping into their live action catalog. Um, but it is Pirates of the Caribbean, the Curse of the Black Pearl. Now, nobody really has any reason to own this disc on 4K. It had really subpar Atmos audio, very, very weak audio. It had a waxy DNR filled, just completely digitally smooth transfer, which just came off terrible, especially for a movie which should have some really fine detail and some great film grain. They scrubbed it, it looked horrible. And then on top of that, the HDR color was pretty bad as well. So it was a swing and a miss from every angle. The video, the audio, the HDR, everything was a huge swing and a miss. And I don't think it's any surprise that we haven't seen the rest of these Pirates of the Caribbean movies in North America on 4K because this one was a total stinker. It came out in January, so it really started the year off. I was so hopeful, but it just isn't worth it. Your Blu-ray copy is going to be better. Unfortunately, I own in my collection uh, and I'm keeping it sort of just out of infamy and how bad it is, but I can't recommend that one to anybody. It's by far the most disappointing disc of the year. Now, just recently, we actually had uh, two more disappointing discs in my opinion. And unfortunately, they both came from Paramount. You may have seen my review on this movie around Thanksgiving time, but it's Planes, Trains, and Automobiles on 4K. I had high hopes for this because, again, it's a movie from the 80s. We know it has a film 35 millimeter source that they could go back and scan. And this was the first time we were getting some deleted scenes from this movie, which had thought to have been lost. So a lot of people were excited for this release. And unfortunately, there's a lot of DNR and noise reduction applied here, which is sort of hit or miss. Some scenes can actually look really good, and I do give them credit, but some scenes just look really, really poor. And again, you get that sort of wax figure look on this 4K disc. It has some slight improvements over the Blu-ray because as I said, that one was really bad. There are select scenes in here which will be better, but it's really probably, it, this is probably one that's gonna be $5 in a few months, to be completely honest. It's a bargain bin title and for that price i actually would say pick it up because it's better than the blu-ray although some scenes can look worse but this one has those special features that people have been wanting for a very long time and so that's one way to own those that would probably be worth the five dollars to big fans of this movie uh, but overall this release was a bit of a mess and it's interesting because i reached out to paramount and i asked you know what what went wrong and it was kind of a I, I got a statement back, which was kind of funny. They they basically, I wouldn't say they accused me, but they said, you know, basically in, in other terms, like, hey, 
you know, a lot of people don't understand their TV settings and that can make things look waxy and smoothed out and that's motion smoothing. And it's like, come on, like I've been doing this for five plus years. I, I, I don't have motion smoothing on. That wasn't the issue. And, you know, according to them, they said it looked fantastic on their reference monitors and looked just as good as the 4K disc. So, um, you know, there must have been a source limitation. I don't think we're getting the full story here from Paramount on what went on with this transfer. But this is one you can definitely uh, wait, pick it up maybe next Thanksgiving for five bucks. It'll slightly improve your viewing experience over the really terrible Blu-ray but it's just not that good. And like I said, Paramount sort of went back to back here and this one was less egregious. This wasn't as bad as planes, trains, and automobiles, but it suffered from a lot of the same issues and it is Saturday Night Fever. Now, Saturday Night Fever is another one that had a decent to, I'd say, below average Blu-ray release, but I've watched that Blu-ray disc. It wasn't terrible, but I was excited for the 4K. I, I remember how Grease looked, and Paramount did such an excellent job with that. It's one of my favorite 4K discs of all time, and unfortunately, Saturday Night Fever, it just suffers from that same DNR. It suffers from that same sort of waxy, smoothed out image. Something's going on with the source or with the way that they processed these film transfers, because this one just didn't look great there are definitely more scenes in saturday night fever that look good than planes trains and automobiles but it's sort of like you go from one scene where they're in the club and it actually looks you know better than the blu-ray and it, it looks pretty decent and then you come down and there's a scene with them all at the kitchen table and you're like what's what's going on here like this has been totally changed and that's another thing paramount mentioned like you know they don't always have the negatives sometimes they have to pull from interpositives or secondary film prints and that could be some of you know the inconsistency that you're seeing with both of these releases but it's it's disappointing no matter what because either these sources were really poorly handled and weren't preserved well and we you know the result is really poor 4k transfers or Paramount just didn't do a great job with these two, which they've been a little notorious for in the past, applying too much of this digital noise reduction, the DNR, the smoothing of the grain, the waxy look and feel. They've been accused of it in the past. I've seen it in the past in their releases. Some of their releases are excellent. Some of them aren't. So I just don't know what's going on over there. But Saturday Night Fever is another one that you could definitely wait for to, you know, hit the bargain bins and get for 5 or $10. And at that price point, that's not bad because it is a marginally better experience than your Blu-ray. Now, the next one here, I don't really have a huge problem with now because I have an OLED TV. But when I originally reviewed it, I did have a problem, and I still consider this a disappointing release, which I'll explain. The movie is Heat. Now, this was also highly anticipated because this was a transfer done by Fox before they got bought by Disney. So it's not a Disney transfer. And getting it on 4K, this was a, you know, a title that we've been waiting for years for. Now, when I got it, the HDR color grading is what sort of turned me off. It was extremely dark. And now that I've watched it on an OLED TV and revisited it, it's better and it definitely looks good. I would take back most of my comments about it being too dark, but only if you have the OLED TV. And to me, that's disappointing because I want every disc to be able to be enjoyed by someone. You shouldn't need a $2,000, $3,000 high-end OLED TV to enjoy a disc. You should be able to enjoy a good disc something like Dune or The Batman or even like Willy Wonka, some of my favorite discs, Grease, stuff like that should be able to be enjoyed on any TV. And unfortunately, I don't think that's the case here for Heat. If you had a lower end TV, or in my case, even a mid to upper tier Sony TV, this was just too dark. It was too dark. And a lot of you in the comments agreed with me. And a lot of you told me, hey, watch it on an OLED. And now that I have, I understand. But it's disappointing that we couldn't get a good 4K release of Heat that is universally accepted by the community, no matter which TV you have. You shouldn't need a reference quality monitor to enjoy a disc. If that's what it takes, then to me, it's a disappointing disc. So those were disappointing discs for sort of technical, like audio visual quality reasons. But 2022 was also the year 
of the physical media recall and i picked a few of these for my most disappointing releases of the year because it is disappointing that we had so many recalls this year and so many discs that had to be replaced but i also want to make sure that if any of you are buying these discs you understand which version you need to buy so the first one up is 12 monkeys from arrow video now this has an amazing 4k transfer it is very very well done but unfortunately it had some issues. So Arrow had to run a full recall on these discs and offer replacement discs for anybody who bought the like sort of first print of it. So that's something you want to be very careful with. I've seen people on Twitter recently who are buying this now, you know, six months later, and they're still getting the disc that has the issue. So you're going to want to make sure if you buy 12 monkeys, you're going to need to confirm with Arrow Video if it's the new disc. And if you're buying it off of somewhere like eBay, I believe you can look up UPC codes. You can find the Arrow Video replacement information on their website, but definitely one that I think you should own. It's really, really good once you get the replacement, but make sure you're getting the right one. So this was disappointing because it is such a great disc and to do a huge recall is always a pain in the ass for people. Now, unfortunately, Criterion has suffered from recalls multiple times uh, since getting into 4K. Interestingly enough, Citizen Kane 4K, the recall was actually on the Blu-ray disc from that release. The 4K disc was great, the Blu-ray was not, and they had people destroy it, which I did on my channel with the hammer, one of my most liked YouTube shorts of the year. But they also had an issue with A Hard Day's Night. And this, again, was, you know, supervised by a lot of people. And nobody caught this during the transfer that there was uh, a scene and certain shots that basically were out of order and not placed correctly in the, in the middle of the movie. So it was disappointing because, again, you know, we, we hope that the people who are supervising this stuff are sitting down, you know, really watching it, having a film historian or somebody who's very familiar with the movie watching it. And of course, human error. Sometimes people miss that stuff. But Criterion had to strip these off the shelves very quickly. Some people grabbed an initial copy and then they got stripped off the shelves and they had to do a disc recall again. So a disappointing one because Criterion another premium brand like Arrow Video, you spend a lot of money and to have to wait on a disc recall is disappointing. Now, it's not the end of the world. Honestly, if you're not a super fan of the movie, you probably wouldn't have even noticed the issue with it. But obviously we want the movie to be in its original form. And I guess the negative that they were working with was out of order and things were out of sync. Somehow that happened. I don't know the real explanation for how it passed by everybody. But another recall from Criterion made for sort of a disappointing release for what should have been a really great 4K disc of one of my favorite musical movies of all time, A Hard Day's Night. Now the last one on my list for disappointing discs this year is unfortunately another Paramount title. Tough year for Paramount given that three out of the seven discs that I'm talking about came from them. And two of them you know, it's a transfer thing. It can come down to personal preference and source. But this one was a recall. And the movie is Escape from L.A. It came out on 4K. I was excited because I'm a big John Carpenter fan. I love everything he does. I'll watch everything Kurt Russell's in with him. But unfortunately, this one had some major audio sync issues. And Paramount had to quickly recall this disc. Now, from what I've heard... And this may be still true. It was if you had the white UPC code on the back, like I do, white UPC code, that's the original print, which means that you need to go through their disc replacement program, which of course is always a pain and makes for a very disappointing experience. So that's it for the list. Really not too bad. Like I've had some really disappointing lists in the, ba uh, the past and that's why I did like worst of lists, but this year was just really good for physical media. Like really only three of these discs, I would say, are not ones you need to run out and buy. And only one of them is a complete skip for me, Pirates of the Caribbean. You can even make an argument playing Strains and Automobiles and Saturday Night Fever are upgrades over the Blu-ray. As disappointing as they were, they are better than what was out there before. So if that's what we're looking for, they're at least worth like five bucks to upgrade. And Heat just depends on your setup. I think the average consumer isn't going to like it and will much prefer the Blu-ray. But if you've got the OLED TV and you've spent the money, 
definitely heats great like i would definitely recommend it but it's just not for every person in every 4k tv and then the others are just recalls which yes that is the definition of disappointing when you spend money and it's immediately recalled and then it sort of it always comes back on the consumer too which is always the most painful thing is you know it's not that you know these companies and it's hard because they can't track everybody who bought something but you have to go in you have to file a claim you got to wait for it to ship to you it comes in an envelope you know six eight ten twelve weeks later and sometimes they're not really great about putting the information out there i always try to spread that information because they sort of will like post it on their instagram page and that's it so they're not sort of proactively contacting people uh, through email or through other communication means to, to, you know, say, hey, there's a disc replacement program. It's sort of like if you're not in the know and you're not following this physical media community, you you could have missed that. So that's disappointing just the way they handled it, that it comes back on us, that we really have to pay attention to this stuff. Hopefully 2023 is less disappointing in terms of recalls, but just as exciting in terms of great discs. If I can come back to you at the end of next year and only have three or four discs that I can complain about, I would say that's another very successful year for physical media. Media. So please don't take this at all negative. This was just a PSA on what to avoid, what to skip, what to save your money on, and what you need to pay attention to if you're buying recall discs. Otherwise, there's so much great stuff out there this year. I want to make sure that you guys understand that this was such a great year, even though there were some disappointing releases. Don't let these mark the rest of the year as poor. 2022 was amazing so thank you all for such a great year as well 2022 was great for the channel we hit 100k we did so many great things we launched a podcast i've had so much fun interviewing people guesting on other spots you know other channels it's been a great year and there's so much more to come in 2023 so thank you all for your support keep supporting physical media and my channel and all the others in this world we all appreciate it so have a great rest of 2022 happy new year and happy 2023 to you all here's to a great year for all of us and stay safe stay healthy out there and i'll talk to you all soon